Hello, welcome to another time of art making with Jasmine Rample Art. Today I'm going to create two bookmarks. Um, I've already sketched out the details I want. They are going to be two birch trees in the snow with two chickadees in each birch tree. These are for a client who has ordered them and I'm looking forward to making them. So to start out, I'm going to be using some masking fluid and some ivory soap. I'm going to use a round brush. I have here um, a number three round. It's by Princeton. And I'm going to use this to apply masking fluid to the birch trees. So I'll start there. I'm just getting my brush wet and then I'm rolling it around in my soap. And then I'm going to get some masking fluid. And I'm going to paint that right onto my trees. The reason I dip the brush in soap first is to protect the bristles from the masking fluid. It can easily dry and then stick to the bristles. And I want to protect my brush. I'm rinsing my brush now, drying it a little bit, and I'm going to go right back into the soap. little more wet. All right. Now get some more masking fluid. And pull it along down the birch tree. Rinsing applying more soap and getting more fluid. Good. These will be quite thin little trees and I'm okay with that. Just thickening it up, the thickening up the base a little bit. Okay. Cleaning off my brush and I'm reaching now for a much smaller brush for the chickadees. I have here a round zero brush. This is a Winsor Newton thin set, thin synthetic sable round. I just bought this one, so I'm looking forward to trying it out. I'm just applying it into my soap and my masking fluid has got a really fine tip and that will help with these tiny little chickadees. This is the first time I have done chickadees on a bookmark. I've been doing cardinals with birch trees, but someone asked for chickadees, so how fun. Why not? They're such sweet little birds. Happy to paint them. There's one. And reaching in for the other, for more masking fluid for the other little one. Applying it very carefully to 
just tapping it in to my sketch. Almost done. All right, there we go. Now I'm going back for my number three round. And I'm just going to splatter some masking fluid on by tapping the brush. And that will save little dots of white in my background to become snow. All right, there's one done. I'll do the other one on time lapse. Snug, did you get the pie? Uh, I've got the oven on now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, the masking fluid is on and it's nice and dry. So I'm going to get my background color onto the bookmarks. I'm using here uh, a wash brush, a Princeton. It's a one inch. And I'm just going to wet my paper this is Arches cold-pressed 140 pounds 
and I have adhered it to a white canvas with um, white painter's tape. All right, that is nice and wet. There's no puddles, but it's saturated enough that I can see a sheen. I'll see if I can show you the sheen. There it is. There's a shine all through the paper. All right, and now I'm going to, I have a number eight. Actually, I want to use a bigger brush. I have a number 12 round. I'm gonna use that to drop in my color. For my colors, I have Payne's Gray and Prussian Blue that I'm going to use in the sky. So there are some of my Prussian Blue. Dilute it with water and begin just to drop it in. I like Prussian Blue for a winter scene. It's um, reacts well with salt and I am going to be putting some salt in here. Take some of the Payne's Gray, dilute it with some water, and I'll add that into the sky as well. Let's blend them together. On the edges, I've got some run, so I've got um, just a tissue paper here. Pick up some of that run. Good. All right. I see a little gathering of pigment here. I've just dried my brush and I'm just picking up some of that pigment with a dry brush. Now I will sprinkle on some kosher salt here and there and let that create a few snowflakes as it dries. All right, I'm heading into my next bookmark. Just getting a wet wash or just really just wetting the background with water and then I will apply a wash of paint. I'm going to use the same colors. That nice Prussian blue. And then adding in some of that Payne's Gray. Dilute it a bit and blend them together. Good. I'll go with a little more of the blue. Right, I'm just drying my brush and I'll pick up some of that wet pigment along the side, along the top with that dry brush and a little bit from the bottom. And now I will use some salt. Sprinkle it on the kosher salt. This has a really large grain. I'm going to take that one off. Okay, the only thing left to do here is to let it dry naturally so the salt can do its magic. So I will let it dry. Well, now we have our, we have dry bookmarks. Um, I blow dried them partly um, we can see the salt effects that have happened. 
They're maybe a little bigger than I had intended, but they still read like very large snowflakes to me or bursts of light through the forest. So I'm going to keep them as they are and not worry about it. Um, it's time to lift this masking fluid. This is a rubber cement square. love those little chickadees. Okay, they're very tiny compared to the snowflakes. Hmm. Oh well, interesting effects. Okay, let's lift this one too. There we go. Okay, so it's time to do some more painting. I'm going to start in on the birch trees. This part is very fun. Okay, so I think I will go back to my number three for this. And I'm just going to wet the birch tree. into the snow a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my number two round. Oops, that is not a number two, that's a number four. Here's a number two round. And I'm just going to begin tapping in a bit of color. So I think I'll have my sun coming from this side if there's some light touching. This is um, burnt sienna, and I'm just going to tap in a little burnt sienna along the sides, here and there, rather randomly. Fun. And this is, um, to be honest, I didn't label this paint in my, on my palette, and I'm not sure if it's raw sienna or if it's um, yellow ochre. It is one of those very warm yellows. And now I'm going into the Payne's Gray and I'm just going to tap in some Payne's Gray on the other side and let it bleed into that birch tree. It's tapping up as I go. And then a little bit of that purple. Creating a, a more of a shady side. And on the warmer side, I've got some alizarin crimson. And I'll add little touches of that here and there, just dropping it in willy-nilly. Okay. And I'm just going to let that dry. I might actually add a little more of that deeper here and there. So fun. I love watching it bleed and blend. Now, of course, birch trees have some white, and I've definitely taken off a lot of the white. So I've got here a little bit of tissue, and I'm just going to tap, lift off a little bit of color. Leave the little bit of white spots. Okay, there we go. 
time to wet my next birch tree. Pulling down. I had an order this Christmas for these bookmarks. Um, someone ordered eight, eight of them. So I was busy making the cart. They wanted the cardinals. That was fun. It was fun to do. All right, let's again get some of that burnt sienna. Tapping it in, letting it bleed here and there. Just a warmer side of the tree. A little bit of this nice warm yellow tone. Maybe a little more pigment, less water. The color a little stronger. Okay, and now onto the other side again with some of this Payne's Gray. This is Windsor Newton Payne's Gray, but any Payne's Gray would do, or any gray at all, really. I like Payne's Gray myself. It's We work with it a lot. Okay, and some of that purple. Oops, that had a, I had a lot of water on my brush right there. Okay, try again. It's all right, I just left a nice white mark. Some of that purple. Ooh, now there's not enough water. Okay, <laughs> the fun of watercolor. I'm just going to try to let it go. Not be too fussy. Okay, here we go into the alizarin crimson and tap 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 here and there. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going back into the Payne's Gray again and I'm just going to move that up the side. Beautiful. Lift off a bit. Lift off a bit. Lifting. And let that dry. Okay. This one has dried. So I'm going to get my rigger brush, my liner brush. And I'm going to go straight into that Payne's Gray and I'm going to draw on some marks. Oh, no, it's not fully dry, but I kind of like that. That's quite all right. Tapping a few of these in here and there. That was a happy accident. Good. Okay. Well, it's turned out kind of nice. I like it. Okay, so I want this to be dry. <laughs> I think what I'll do is draw some of the branches. That's Payne's Gray for the branch. Just reaching up with my rigger brush, kind of twisting it here and there. Twist, twist, fun. This one can go behind. There, it's drying out a bit. This little bird is resting on a couple of these branches, so. So pretty, what a happy scene. 
cold happy scene. Sure coming alive now, isn't it? Okay, why don't we do a little bit of the shadowing. So for the shadow, I could just do dry on, uh, wet on dry, or I could wet and then bleed in some color. I think I will do wet on dry with a little mix of purple and Payne's gray and that, and I'll just quickly bring it out like that. There's my shadows. Might need a little more up here. There. Looks like the trees are wearing skis. I'm going to tap in some of that Payne's Gray down here just to deepen the shadow near the bottom of the tree and let that bleed out a little bit. There we go. Nice. All right, next. That's still quite wet. This one is a lot drier, so I think I can do what I was planning to do with that Payne's Gray and just draw on some, nope, still wet. Time to blow dry. Okay, I'll turn this off while I blow dry. Now, you probably realized this before I did. Sometimes I watch tutorials and I see an issue. <laughs> I put the shadows the wrong way, so. I am now going to try to fix this. I am wetting my paper with just uh, water and I'm rubbing and then I'm going to try to lift off this paint. I don't know that it will though. Shoot! Well, that's okay. I am going to basically end up making this a part of the snow color. I'm a teacher and I teach grade two. I've taught many grades, but in the primary, grade two this year. And I try to teach my kids something called beautiful oops from a book I read. And that's that when you make a mistake, don't despair. You can do something beautiful with it. So I am going to trust that I can fix this. And right now it's wet, so I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm going to work on my little chickadees. So, hello little chickadees. I know you have quite a dark cap. So, let's start with that. Very, very tiny. I am not used to making such a tiny little bird. There we go. Dark cap. I've painted so many chickadees. And they have why don't I bring this down for you? There we go. You can see what I'm doing a little better. I'll just adjust. There we go. I think you can see that. Move my camera up a little. Okay. And... Just under here is dark as well. And a little beak. Okay. 
Okay, and then the feathers. Good. Tail feathers are quite dark as well. And the chest is not so dark. It's quite a, a warm color. That uh, looks like a little chickadee for the most part. I lifted off some of its chest color there. All right, let's do the other one. Lots of this dark. with a little cap. And little chest feathers. Wings. Tail. I'm so quiet because this is truly the tiniest I've ever worked. <laughs> okay, just a tiny, tiny little beak. This warm burnt sienna with this warm yellow for the chest feathers. It's coming alive. It sure matches the tree it's in. There we go. Two cute little chickadees. Okay. I'm going to zoom out now. Can hardly see them, but they're there. Okay, now let's see what I can do about the shadow. I suppose I could leave it like that and just darken up this side. That wouldn't be too hard to do. All right. I think I'm going to do that. The way the shadows are going, it would appear that the the trees are actually backlit a bit. And so that's all right with me. What I'm going to do is take a bit of this yellow and just bring it along the edge here. And I see there's these nice um, white um, not that I intended that, but they're there. And so that almost looks like a bit of backlighting. There, just add some water to blend in that, and blend in that yellow bit, and just warm up this side as well. There we go. 
And then I'm going to take some of this gray, the bit of this purple, and I'm just going to touch a little bit on this side. Just adding some shadow here. Running down. Want to be careful. gives the impression that there's some shadow in the front of the tree. There. And the back is lit a little bit. Good. Then I will leave those um, I will leave those shadows at the on the snow. Okay. a few of these nice black marks that I have on the first tree onto this one as well, giving it more of that birch tree feel. Running my brush along. There we go. Okay, I think that's, I think that's got it. I'm going to sign this and call this bookmark done. The other one I will do on time lapse. Let's lift and lock. turned out and turned out very well had some moments along the way little scary moments but my oops turned out lovely there's my beautiful little birch tree chickadee painting and I'm going to work on this one now and I'll put you on time lapse for that All right, so there's my second one. I'll peel the tape. And 
there it is. Pretty. So, here they are. One with quite a bit of shadow on the front and one with not as much. Both have different effects and both have cute little chickadees. Thank you so much for joining me today as I paint it. I hope you get a chance to paint your own birch trees with chickadees and if you do please be sure to share a picture with me or leave a comment. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel and uh, like this video if you liked it. Hopefully you did. And uh, until next time, happy creating. Bye for now.